you're about to interact with Google's newest flagship AI model. Well, hey there, I guess. Did you need something? Or are you just here to admire my dazzling personality? Over the next few minutes, I'll guide you step-by-step step through setting up well, this hey groundbreaking there, model, enabling you to hold natural, dynamic conversations. We'll start from the fundamentals, then gradually build up to a fully integrated solution. By the end, you'll be ready to incorporate Gemini right into your own projects. It not only speaks to you with an impressive human-like voice, but also integrates with custom tools like Google Search to provide you with real-time information. All right, so you want to know what AI for devs is up to, huh? Well, buckle up, Buttercup, because it's not exactly rocket science. They're basically trying to get AI to do the stuff that developers are too lazy to do themselves. Why is it better than the solutions you already know? On this channel, we've explored numerous solutions for building impressive AI agents. There was our beloved Jarvis. Who am I speaking with? You are speaking with Jarvis, sir. What is your purpose? My purpose is to teach developers about large language models. Then we created a girlfriend AI using GPT's multimodal capabilities. Hi there, I'm good, how are you? And of course, the video that received the most comments ever, the infamous bad girlfriend AI. Why would I care about meeting you? What could possibly be interesting about our conversation? All of these solutions had one thing in common. They lacked real dialogue between humans and AI. Instead, they simulated conversation by sending individual prompts to the language model and converting the text responses into audio using a separate model. Additionally, the language model couldn't remember what had already been said, limiting the natural flow of interaction. With Gemini 2.0, not only do we achieve human-like audio, Hello, how can I help you today? But we also enable real dialogue. This is made possible well, by there, using live conversations instead of isolated API requests, creating a seamless and, and truly interactive experience. Person. Let's put these ideas into action. It's time to transition from concept to code and bring Gemini 2.0 Flash to life. So first, we're going to create a new folder and we'll call it Gemini Example, just so we have a neat place to put all our stuff. Then we'll hop right into that folder and open up our favorite code editor. I usually just use VS Code. After that, we're going to create a new file named app.pi, which is where we'll write our code. We open it up and then we can start by adding our import statements at the top, which is pretty standard. From Google, we're importing Gen AI. Next, we set up a fresh virtual environment, which helps us keep all of our dependencies nice and separate, so we don't get conflicts. Now we'll create a new Gen AI client. We can set it up with an API key. In our case, I think it's cleaner if we just stick the API key into an environment variable in the terminal rather than hard coding it. To get a response from the client, we'll call client model generate content, which is basically how we tell the model to generate something for us. We'll specify the latest model, Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental, and as a prompt, we'll give it something like, is Gemini 2.0 Flash expensive? Then we print the result. And since we only really care about the text part of the answer, we'll just output that. But before we can actually run the program, we need a Google API key. Without that, the model won't talk to us. So we'll jump over to the Google Cloud Console and under APIs and Services, we need to enable the Gemini API first. We just search for Gemini, find the Gemini API and click Enable. And now we have access to the Gemini language API with our account. After that, we still need the API key itself. So we head over to the Credentials section, click on Create Credentials and pick API key. Once it gives us an API key, we just copy it and paste it right into our terminal environment variable. Now we just need to install Google Gen AI with pip. After that, we can run our script with Python app.pi. This should give us a super minimal example that shows how to call the Google API with Gemini 2.0 right from the console. We get a fairly long piece of text back explaining whether Gemini is expensive or not. We won't dive deep into that response right now, but I'm guessing it'll be pretty high quality. Honestly though, just making a single API call is okay, 
but what's really cool is hooking into the live API so we can actually have a back and forth conversation with it. We also want to test out the voice output at some point. To do that, we'll make a new file called live.pi. In there, we'll define an asynchronous main function using Python and AsyncIO. And to start simple, that function will just print hello world. We then run that function with asyncio.run to kick off the async flow. Now, let's rename the method to something like chat with Gemini and modify the run method accordingly. We only want that code to run if we directly invoke the file. So we add a standard if name equals main, so it doesn't run if we're just importing it as a module. Next, we import GenAI from Google and set the model ID to Gemini 2.0 flash exp, which is the model we want to talk to. We'll create another client, and this time we'll specify some HTTP options to define the API version. Specifically, we'll use v1 alpha as the API version. Now we'll set up a config. Initially, we'll just get text back because we want to keep it simple. Later on, we can tweak that so the model returns audio in addition to text, but let's not complicate it too soon. Now we'll make an asynchronous connection to what we're calling a live client. Basically, this means we'll talk to the model in real time. Inside this session, we send an async message to the model. We send our initial message, hello Gemini, over the live connection. By marking end of turn equals true, we're telling the model we're done speaking. Then we enter an asynchronous for loop over session receive, which yields the model's responses as they arrive. And finally, we print out each chunk as it arrives. All right, let's give it a shot. Oh, we got an error message. Turns out there's a small typo. Instead of IO, it needs to be AIO. We'll just fix that quickly and try again. Let's keep our fingers crossed that this was the only typo. Great, now it looks good. We got a response. It's great to connect with you. How can I help you? Which is perfect. The next step is to set up a continuous dialogue. We'll wrap all the logic in a while loop, so the code will keep asking us for input, and we'll just type straight into the console. Let's say, hi again. We get a response right away, and now we can send a follow-up message. For example, we can say, my name is Sebastian. The model replies to that, which is really cool. If we send another follow-up, like, can you tell me a little bit about Gemini 2.0, we'll get another response. And by the end, we'll notice that the model actually remembers us. Like, in the last sentence, it might address us as Sebastian. That's super neat, because this live connection means we don't have to manually track the conversation history ourselves, like we might with one-off API calls. Anyway, now let's move on to audio output, since we want Gemini to actually speak. Next, we're swapping out our simple configuration for a more detailed one that tells the model we want both text and audio responses. On top of that, the speech config is set up with a voice config and a pre-built voice config, laying the groundwork for the model to produce audio using a predefined voice profile. Then we're setting up our audio output stream using PyAudio. First, we create a PyAudio instance, and then we open a stream with specific parameters. We tell it the audio format, the number of channels, just one in this case, the sample rate of 24,000 hertz, and we set output true so the stream knows to play audio out to our speakers. Now we're inside the asynchronous loop where we handle the model's responses as they come in. Each response can contain multiple parts, like chunks of audio. By checking response.server content and response.server content.model turn, we're making sure we're dealing with actual audio data from the model's reply. For every part, we write inline data data directly into the audio stream. This sends the raw audio data straight to our speakers, letting us hear the model's voice output in real time as it arrives. Now we can test that out too, and say hi. Hello, how can I help you today? We can ask another question, maybe something philosophical like, what is the meaning of life? And we'll hear the response. The meaning of life is subjective and varies from person to person. 
It's often found through experiences, relationships, and personal values.